He has made us strong. He has made us healthy. We celebrate his loving, tender kindness. The Lord who redeemed our life from destruction. There are wars everywhere, kidnapping everywhere, chaos everywhere, famine everywhere. But this God has redeemed our life from destruction. He has not consumed us. This God has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Why not worship the name of the Lord? Let's exalt him because he has satisfied our mouth with good things. He has blessed us with his love. Behold what manner of love our Father has bestowed upon us that we are called the sons of God. It's a special privilege. We are worshiping the Lord this morning as children of God. Let's thank God for that privilege. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from God because of his ways, but because of God's loving, tender kindness. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from God. Let's worship him because of the good gifts. A good gift of a great day like this. Good gift of our general superintendent. A good gift of all of our leaders. He has given us good gifts at our workplaces, good gifts at our career, good gifts at our families, good gifts, our community, good gifts. Let's worship the name of the Lord. He has not turned down our prayers. Every time we come to this tabernacle of faith, he always listens to us. Our God has never failed us. When we call upon him, he answers. Our God has never embarrassed us. Let's worship the name of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Don't be too familiar with our God. Let's raise up our voices. Let's worship him. Be sure you are communicating to God this morning. This is a worship service. And we are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. Let's raise up our voices this morning. And worship the name of the Lord. Let's thank him because of a church like this. The church of God. The church where the truth is established. The church where the truth takes priority and preeminence. The church where we are called unto holiness. Let's thank God for the privilege. The privilege of sonship. The privilege of sonship. The privilege of sonship. Born again Christians redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. It is not by your mercy. It, it is not by what you have done. It is by Christ's mercy. He himself has redeemed us. Be sure you are raising up your voice to God this Sunday morning. Be sure you are communicating with your maker this morning. Let's commit the service this morning into God's hands. Right from the congregational hymn to the message by our Father and the Lord, that the Lord will do us good.
that would not be too familiar with the word, who would not be too familiar with his message and his instructions. We will be obedient. We will listen to him as he speaks. That this morning, every message that is for us, we will take it. We will abide by it. Because he is the potter, we are the clay. He will mold us. Let's commit all the ministers for today's service into God's hands. From our search the scripture teachers so the pastor will take the question and answer to our choir members the children choir the youth choir the adult choir and to our father in the lord let's pray that the holy ghost will consume them the Holy Ghost will inhabit them. Everything they say will not just be their words. But it will be words of life. Message of life. Praises of life. All the ministers today, the Lord will use them Especially, the Lord will give them a message for us. The songs will speak to us. The side scriptures will speak to us. The question and answer period, we answer every question in our heart. And the message, the message of life, the message of hope, the message of holiness, the message will speak to our hearts. We bless our hearts. And we make us ready for his coming. Then you commit yourselves unto the hands of God. As, as you are here, you will not live here the same. This will be a Sunday service for you to remember. You will not leave this tabernacle the same. You will not leave this Sunday service the same. God will bless you. That this Sunday service, this worship service, shall meet you at the point of your need. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come, we we'll pray that, Lord, our praises today shall ascend into your throne in Jesus' name. And let this be a Sunday service to remember for us all in Jesus' name. Bless your ministers and bless your congregation in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We remain standing as we take our congregational hymn. Hymn 96, Peace Be Still. Hymn 96, Peace Be Still. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. The sky is all shadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish, how canst thou lie asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening, a grave in the angry deep. Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grave to thee. The depths of my sad heart are troubled. Oh, wake in and save 
I pray. Torrent of sin and of anguish, sweep her my sinking soul, and I perish, I perish, dear master. O hasten and take control. Master, the terror is over. The element is sweetly rest. Earth, sun, and calm lake is mirrored, and heavens within my breast. Linger, O blessed Redeemer. Leave me alone no more, and with joy I shall make the blessed arbor and rest on the blissful shore. The winds and the waves shall obey my will. Peace be still. Whether the wrath of the storm-tossed sea, or demons, or men, or whatever it be, no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace, peace be still. <laughs>
Good morning, class. Shall we pray together? Almighty Father, we thank you very much for bringing us again together today to the house and the sanctuary of the Lord, the sanctuary of strength, the place of power, the place of joy, and the place of rejoicing. We ask you, O oh Lord, that today you make all these be in our lives in Jesus' name. Teach us from your word. Take us through the scriptures and the man of God and your servants that you have prepared today. You will feed us mightily this day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the answer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to lesson number 35. And the title is Christ Power Over Nature. Shall we say it together? Our text to be from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 36, and Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. Well, a uh, fast reader, please uh, get ready to read for us. While well, we take the memory verse from Luke chapter 8, verse 24. Anyone can uh, handle the um, memory verse for us, please? Yes, uh, sister. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a calm. Luke chapter 8, verse 24. God bless you, my sister. Yes, sir, text. Praise God. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 36. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into his sheep and to go before him onto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, toes with waves, for their, for their wing was contrary. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying is a spirit and they cried out for fear but straightway jesus speak unto them saying be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and peter answered him and said lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and he said come and when peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to jesus but when he saw the wind posterior, he was afraid and beginning to sink and cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why didst thou that? And when he was coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. And when he were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into the co all that country round about, and brought unto him all that were diseased, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garments. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. Luke chapter eight. chapter eight, verse twenty-two. And it came to pass, and it came to pass on the certain day that he went into his ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and the seas and there was a calm and he said unto them where is your faith and they, being afraid, wonder, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and the water, and they obeyed him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. The manifestation of Christ's authority in calming the storm brings in a new dimension to the believer of the personality of this humble-looking master. We must therefore exercise our faith in God when confronted with challenges of life. Christ's presence with the disciples was revealing 
each event, each day, each episode, each conflict, or each confrontation progressively reveal the true personality of Christ to them. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, What do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? What do they say? And uh, they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, But whom say ye that I am? He tested them. He checked them. Have I revealed myself enough? Do they know exactly who I am? The progressive revelation. So what he did today in our passage, in our text, shows another aspect uh, in the life of our master. In Psalm 62, verse 11, God had spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belonged unto God. Twice. Power in heaven and power on earth. Power in the heavenlies and power amongst men this year as in Isaiah chapter 40 and in verse 28 has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting God the Lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength the manifestation of his power in all circumstances is still a possibility today check out the GCK and the overflow of outstanding miracles that you will then begin to understand the invincibility of our master Jesus Christ he is God question from our text what convinced the disciples about Christ's deity from our text what convinced the disciples about Christ's deity? Yes, any hand? Yes, sir, sister. His authority in calming the storm. Thank you very much, sister. As we look at the study today, three things. Number one, Christ's pattern of winning souls. Two, Christ's presence in the storm three christ power over sicknesses number one christ pattern of reaching souls in matthew chapter 14 and in uh, verse 22 and straight away jesus constrained his disciples to go into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away he also in luke chapter 10 and in verse 1 after these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself will come. Having completed an outreach in one place, Jesus will send an advance party to other places. That's the other side. Everywhere must be covered and that as quickly as possible. Men and material must be deployed the other side the other city the other village the other community the other local government the other school the other state it will not remain in one place you must cover the whole land because in john chapter 10 verse 16 jesus said another sheep i have which are not of this fold them also i must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. You can see how the church, led by the man of God, is following the principles of Christ in the scriptures. In Mark chapter 13 and in verse 10, and the gospel must first be published among all nations. We must therefore develop strategies for world evangelization. In Matthew chapter 14, Matthew chapter 14, and in verse 23 and when he had sent the multitude the way he went up into a mountain apart to pray now have you seen the chain prayer plans adopted by our leaders as we prepare for each gck outreach prayer is a means appointed by god in drawing and moving the divine hand for all round blessings and breakthroughs in gospel outreach 
what else can we learn from the master's pattern of soul winning number one we learn that it is compulsory that means it is mandatory in john chapter 9 verse 4 i must work the works of him that sent me while it is there number two it is compelling he that believeth not shall be damned it is compelling and then number three it is converging converging from one city to another from one place to another number four it is constraining that means it's time bound we learned that at least 120 souls pass to eternity every minute in the world number five we learn that it is communing that is praying pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he will send for laborers into his harvest it is communing and then number six we learn that it is conflicting conflicting against the powers of darkness the thief commit not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers so number seven it is what it is converting say not ye there are four months and then comment harvest he said lift up your heads and look at the fields they are white already to harvest question how can contemporary christians do exploits for the Lord. How can contemporary Christians do exploits for the Lord? Anyone here? Yes, I see hand here. Yeah. All right, back to the choir. Yes, brother. Thank you. Believers can do exploits for the Lord by following the examples of Jesus Christ and making sure they go to the other side as Christ has done. Thank you very much. Question, another question. I itemize some important lessons from the command of Christ to his disciples to get to the other side. Some commands that we learned. And the master said, let's get to the other side. What are the things that we learned from that? Nobody else has said the choir. All right, yes, sir. The lesson we learn is that because God has spoken, we just have to obey. He will be with us at the other side. Thank you very much, sister. Point number two, Christ's presence in the storm. Christ's presence in the storm. In Luke chapter 8, from verse 23. Luke chapter 8, and in verse 23. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and the seas and there was a calm storms of life come to the believer and to the unbeliever alike but the difference is this many are the afflictions of the righteous but what the Lord delivered him out of them. Oh, that you see in Psalm 34 verse 19, the presence of God. Remember Jacob, Jacob in Genesis chapter 28 verse 15, God said to him, I will not leave you and I will not forsake you until I've done all that I've spoken to thee of. The presence of God is important. What about Moses in Genesis chapter 33? Moses, the people have seen and he was interceding for them talking to the Lord. God says, I'm not going with you. These are stiff naked people that I will send an angel to come with you. Moses says, sir, if you will not come with us, carry us not hence. Leave us here in the wilderness. And he interceded and pleaded. And God said to Moses in uh, verse 14, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. And for Joseph and the losses that God was with Joseph. While his brothers were trying to kill him, God was with Joseph. While he was in the house of Potiphar, God was with Joseph. While he was in prison, God was with Joseph. What about David? And God was with David, the demons fled from him. King Saul was afraid of him. Goliath and his siblings ended their career of tyranny and profligacy because God was with David. What about Joshua? The Lord said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. What about you and I today? When thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. Praise the Lord. 
challenges of life can sometimes make believers to be doubtful but listen the disciples cried master master we perish with jesus in the boat the master of ocean of earth and skies the wind and the water shall obey my will peace be still whether the wrath of the storm tossed sea or demons or men or whatever it be no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean of earth and sky they all shall sweetly obey my will peace be still jesus remember all things we are made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen to his transaction with job in job chapter 38 job chapter 38 and in verse 2 job had been saying i am righteous i am holy i am perfect i am pure i am good i am this and he was saying all those yes he was because god has said in the beginning oh job have you seen job an upright man have you seen job a perfect man have you seen job he fears god have you seen job he rejects evil he will not accept any evil he said that's job my servant and now the trouble has come job didn't know what god has said about him job didn't know how the lord regarded him and now he was saying trouble had come storms had come he had waited he had stood and then the miserable comforters his friends were there to persecute him the more they tried to help him but their words could not assuage his grief and his bitterness that he had and then he began to talk and he said oh the day i was born why was i even born into this world why should i have this why should this come and then he went on and on and then discussed between him and his friends and then in the end after he said i don't know these days i pray i don't hear from god i call upon him there's no answer i search there's nothing at all what is happening to me i don't understand however i know my redeemer living i know he's alive one day he shall stand upon the earth one may destroy this flesh and this body but in my flesh i shall see him however he talked and talked and talked much then in chapter 38 of job verse 2 look at the transaction who is this god was now asking him who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge verse 4 where was thou when i laid the foundations of the earth and in verse 7 when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of god shouted for joy that's the angels he's talking this was jesus laid the foundation of the world jesus created the heavens and the earth because all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and in verse 31 canst thou bind the sweet influences of the pleiades or lose the bands of orion he says look job listen look at the constellation of the stars there the ones called the pleiades he says can you bind them me i have bound them whenever you look at those stars they remain at a fixed constant distance from each other i have bound them he says what about the orion has that loosed the bands of orion that's another constellation of stars he said i have loosed those ones they are always moving apart at great speed i did it job what are you talking about verse 39 chapter 39 verse 19 is it has thou given the horse strength has thou clothed his neck with thunder in uh, matthew chapter 14 verse 28 lord peter on the water lord if it be thou bid me come to thee on the water jesus at this time is suspended the laws of hydrodynamics while altering the specific gravity of water and peter walked upon the water and it was working because jesus had power over the water he had power over the body he had power over nature and over land he had power over men two laws we are given the laws of man in the bible to regulate our lives to reveal god and christ to us to show us the way to heaven to show us how to know god and how to be saved there's another law the law in the universe he put the earth there and gave it a law it's a spin around uh, um, once every 24 hours he said keep going around the sun he said once every 365 days and then they put the moon and all the planetary things there they have their motion they have their direction and they have the laws he has given to govern them they keep those laws they go by it and man trying to get into space now has to now begin to discover 
what God has already put and planned there for him. So these two laws were given. And then here, when Peter now walked upon water because of the miracle that God had done, then he now saw the storm and the raging of the wind. He took his eyes off the master and then fear came. What happened? He began to sing. He began to sing. But he was smart enough to shout, Lord, help me. If you are sinking in the storms of life, you can call on him and he will save you. He will save you. The presence of Christ establishes his sovereignty and assures us of overwhelming victory in all challenges of life. No wonder Paul the apostle said in Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 13, I can do all things through whom? Through Christ that that strengthened me. Question, give examples of storms in a believer's life. Give examples of storms in a believer's life. Can you hear? Yes, uh, brother. A storm can be childlessness, lack of finances, and sometimes the breakthrough refuses to come then we need to hold on to god thank you very much sister uh, this brings us to point number three christ's power over sickness christ's power over sickness in luke chapter 16 and in verse 19 luke chapter 16 and in verse 19 and the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and healed them all jesus has absolute power over man and over nature he brings calmness instead of crisis he brings confidence instead of confusion he brings peace instead of pandemonium he brings faith instead of fear he brings victory instead of being vanquished the question is do you know the lord does he know you is your life confirming his word or is it contradicting it are you enjoying his church or you are just enduring it the night is fast spent the day is at hand the lord has showed us today that soul winning is a priority in the life of the believer we must strategize we must persevere we must go to the other side storms may arise but we will override it in his name his presence is our security his word is our stability and his name is our sustainability even today your storms will abate even today your storms will abate and your sickness will terminate through his name amen let's rise up and go to the lord in prayer mighty father we thank you very much for your words today thank you for the revelation of the master thank you that from step to step from stage to stage the disciples they saw it as just this man they saw him as a great teacher they saw him as a miracle worker and progressively until the lord revealed to them that this is the son of god father we pray that you continue to open these pages to us and continue to reveal the master to us that he is the master of the earth and the skies and the ocean and the land master over sicknesses master over diseases master over every storm of life oh lord do it for us in jesus name thank you father because we know you've answered for in jesus name we pray amen Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. This morning we have been learning about Christ's power over nature. And if you have any question to ask or issues to clarify, you are liberty to stand up and come to the front of the aisle where you are and um, ask your question. Anyone, come to the front of the aisle where you are and ask your question. 
Can we quickly do that? The sister over there. Can you ask a question, please? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was a prayer for Christian before, very strong, very strong Christian before. But now I find out that when I want to pray, I'm sleeping. When I want to pray, I'm sleeping. I'm not preaching again. This kind of storm, how will I go about it? How will I survive? So that is what I want to ask. I didn't quite catch your question. Can you come again with the question? I say I was a prayerful Christian before. Okay. And I preach a lot. But suddenly now a very big storm come over me. I cannot, when I'm praying, I will find myself sleeping. I don't preach again. And many, many storms like that, I cannot measure them out. All. This kind of storm now, how will I go about it? Because I look at this as a storm. When a Christian is not praying again, he's dead. So I want you to breathe me, what will I do? Okay, we almost understand the word of God to us if we are children of God truly. We have been redeemed by the Lord and we have benefited from the grace of God that brought us salvation. Our preaching of the word is not to be seasonal. Our preaching of the word will be continuous from the point of our salvation till the very, very end of our lives. And this was the counsel of for the apostle to Timothy as he was about to wind up his ministry in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and I read to you all from verse 1 I charge thee therefore before God and Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance in his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove, rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine be instant in other words be ready to preach the word of god when it is convenient or when it is not convenient but well, as sister i raised a valid point sometimes we come to a low ebb of our lives at such a time what should a believer do of course we look at the example of our lord jesus christ in hebrews chapter 12 and I read to you from verse um, 1, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, since we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin will not so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that they set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that will before him endure the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of great of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your heart minds. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. The Lord remains our example and model. To emulate and to approximate and to look up to at all times there will be dark seasons there will be dry seasons there will be dry moments as such a time we are to look up unto jesus and indeed up to tarry always in his presence because more than anything else the lord desire that we have fellowship with him if by being in fellowship with him always they were assured of constant victory and the readiness and the resolve to preach the word of God in Mark chapter 3 and I read to you from verse 13 Mark 3 and verse 13 and he went up into a mountain and called upon him whom he would and he came unto him and he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach when you are getting weary and getting tired revert to the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ stay with him tarry in his presence lift up your eyes to the holy ears for whence come to help your herbs come from the lord who is the makeup as an anna is the one who has called us is the one who always enable us and empowers and energizes us is the one who will inspire us is the one who will illuminate us is the one who even in the face of death 
will give us the courage to keep on proclaiming him as you see many disciples did in isaiah chapter 40 and i read verse 28 isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28 he says and i read as thou art not known as thou not art and the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding he gives power to the faint and to them that have no mind he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall can we read verse 31 together church all of us want to go verse 31 are you there in Isaiah for chapter 40 are you all there i need to hear from you let us read verse 31 together want to go for they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall marrow with wings as eagles they shall run and not be worried and they shall walk and not faint even there will be season of despair seasons of discouragement it doesn't give us any excuse before the law for failure except we cheap on our salvation we run back to the prayer of the lord we wait upon the lord for renew of our strength until the stain returns to us again and the vision becomes clearer and then we give ourselves effect to the work of god it's not a work we do for a season it's a what we do for all season until the work must be done what a sister must be saying to herself to have her strength renewed is as we conclude we seen in psalm 27 and verse 13 psalm 27 verse 13 he says i had fainted in other words i would have given up unless i believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living in other words if not because i believe that by time in god's presence i will see his goodness again dry seasons will be over the time of weariness and weakness will be over he therefore spoke himself wait on the lord be of good courage and it shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord sister i say to you the lord will strengthen you i said the lord will strengthen you the lord will uphold you and to those of us who might be passing through that patch of life let return before god nobody is made of steel we all derive our strength and power and mind from the lord and we do so daily and when we do so before him in all loneliness and meekness of character and, and in all sincerity he will renew our strength we will not give up we'll keep on preaching and the lord will be exalted through us in the name of jesus christ my sister do you understand another one please yes the brother over there good morning sir this morning i learned that peter because he exercised fear that was why he was uh, he, he, he was drawn somehow but now sir i want to ask can we say that peter as at that time uh, was not a believer that made him to exercise fear he was a believer but my question is now if somebody is a believer and is a genuine child of god does that mean that uh, when challenges comes that person will not exercise fear when challenges come does that mean that that person will not exercise fear let's look at the text once again and read in luke chapter luke chapter Eight and verse twenty-two. No, Matthew chapter fourteen. Matthew fourteen. I want to read from verse what the verse now and verse twenty-seven. Let's read from verse twenty-five. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. 
And when Peter was come down to the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come unto the ship, the wind ceased. Hallelujah. You know, it is easier for us to criticize Peter as saying that he didn't have much faith. But there is a different experience for them all together. The Bible said the sea was boisterous, the sea was stormy. And if you see a stormy sea, the waves riding very high, however intrepid you may be, however courageous you may be, if you are not a very strong person in the faith, your faith will fail you. The Lord Jesus in his power and mind could say, you of little faith, because as the Son of God and the Son of Man, he had conquered all that. And the subject we are treating today is his power over nature. But for Peter, who is imagined as a disciple of the Lord, they must go through the process of faith building, of faith construction, before they could get to a point whereby he and John would stand before this and dream. And they said, don't say anything about God again. And they would say, we rather believe God and with man. There is a space of a few years between then and now. Sometimes it takes time before we can get to a point whereby we can stand upon the word of God. There will be no fear or anxiety in our hearts at all. Let's look at the example of a man in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and I read verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also, and the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them all that beside the Ammonites came again Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat saying, they are coming a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Azontema, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. We may be confronted with challenges so that we fear, we exercise anxiety and panic. But that panic and anxiety must not make us to lose sight of the fact that our God has the command to deliver us. And whatever we are passing through, God will deliver you. I said, God will deliver you. Tell your neighbor, God will deliver you. Say very well now. He will deliver us. Joshua feared air. But the fear didn't prevent him from going to God to pray. To call a fast. To sanctify a fast. Let's go to God. That's the way it is with believers. When we are imagined as Christians, there will be challenges and perplexities that are bigger than us. They should not drive us away from the Lord. They must draw us to God's presence to turn before Him. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, and as in verse 6, I read it, Philippians chapter 4, and verse 6, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, be anxious about nothing. Be afraid about nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God, we pass it all understanding, shall keep your eyes and minds through Christ Jesus. There comes a point that us has stayed upon the Lord, we have walked with God now, we have trusted Him, and God has lifted us up. There have been afflictions and tribulations and tempests God has carried us to. Therefore, we have expenses to fall back upon. Fear cannot overwhelm us anymore. Fear cannot drown us in anymore. We take every challenge in our stead, in our stead, that He would deliver us in time past. He will deliver us now, and in the future, He will deliver us. And truly, God will deliver us. But before we get to that stage, there will be time that we accept fear. We are anxious. We are worried. But don't allow your heart to be so worried, you depart from the presence of God. Let fear knock you to the presence of God. And then as you grow in faith, you grow in the love of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
The Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The time will come that fear will go away. Instead of fear, you have faith. And this morning, I pray that God will put his faith in your heart in Jesus' name. In John chapter 14, I read verse 1. John 14, I read verse 1. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. We believe in God. We put our trust in God. We allow whatever comes across our way to go to the presence of God and call upon the God of heaven. Do I walk? Through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou with me, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. The Lord will help us to overcome more challenges. Jesus didn't promise anybody that once you become my disciple, no tribulation, no tempest, no trouble. No, -uh. the Bible tells us in Psalm 34, verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. In John chapter 16, and I read verse 33, he says, These things are spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye will have the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And because he's a savior, he's a lord and master, he has overcome for us. I ask you this question. Once he has overcome for us, shall we overcome also? I can't hear you. We shall overcome. You will overcome. I will overcome. The Lord will give us the grace always to overcome in Jesus' name. Yes? Challenges will come. Yes? Afflictions will come. Yes? Tribulations will come. Yes? Temptations will come. Yes? Trials will come. But this was make us to stay with the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Let fear drive you to God's presence. And the time will come as you grow in grace. And the Lord of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, faith will replace fear. And every challenge will become like nothing before all in the name of Jesus Christ. This morning we have learned a lot from the example of our civil Lord and master. And it remains an example for all time. But there is something that I would like for all to note there. In the text in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. Matthew 14 and verse 22. It says, and I read, and straightway Jesus constrained the disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side. While he sent the Moses away. And when he had sent the Moses away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. There's something we must interrogate here. And that is, why didn't the Lord accompany his disciples? His Lord. is the Savior. is the consummate King. Why must you go and pray? Because he knew that prayer was very vital to his ministry. And without prayer, he could not conquer nature. Even though he is God, incarnate in man, he still needed to pray that he would be able to conquer nature. And it's a sign for to each and every one of us also. That at intervals, we must go back to the word of God and pray and seek the face of the living God. And as we go to the scriptures, you see the prayer path of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 3, in the, when he was being baptized in the Jordan, the Bible says, as he prayed, the heaven became opened unto him. And the word came from heaven. This is my beloved son, in whom I were pleased. In Luke chapter 6, when he was going to choose his disciples, he didn't leave it to chance. He took to God in prayer. The Bible says he, was, he went to a man to pray and continued all night in prayer. To God in Luke chapter 9, we're told that on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Lord prayed and his countenance was altered, and the glory of God came down in Luke chapter 22 at the Garden of Gethsemane when he was going to face the cross. He didn't leave it to chance, he prayed, and an angel came down to strengthen him. In the persecution of the gospel, we cannot achieve more without prayer. We must give ourselves to prayer in that Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 23. And when he sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening was come, he was there alone. And as he came, he walked on the water. He had conquered nature. He had conquered tempest. He had conquered tribulation. 
And therefore, when they saw it, they were afraid. And when Peter saw it, it was a different experience to him. And then he asked him to come. His faith carried the faith of Peter until he looked away from the Savior. He looked at the storm. Our gaze must be on the Savior. A fixation must be on the Savior. Pray and pray and pray and pray. And glorious things will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. In your district, glorious things will happen. In my district, growth things will happen. In our group, growth things will happen. In every location, growth things will happen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it can start even now, can't it? Let's rise up and talk to God in prayer, and the Lord will manifest a great power upon us as we see Him pray, as we see Him tarry before God, as we see Him seek the face of God. We also will pray. Can you open your mouth and pray and say, Lord, give me the burden to pray, the consuming passion to pray. Give me the grace to pray, to tie long in your presence, to wait upon the Lord, to plead my cause, to call upon the name of the Lord. And I saw from a man from among them, who will stand in the gap and make all the earth that will not destroy the land. God said, I couldn't find anyone, therefore I was there with no child that destroy the land. Let's pray. The Lord will silence the mouth of the naysayers and the gainsayers. Jesus will reign as uh, reign supreme. Christ will be exalted. The Bible said, He must reign. Until all his enemies become a fool to you. Can we pray? Can we pray? For today, tell the Lord, enlist me. Tell the Lord, conscript me to be in the army of the Lord. I'm not just taking for granted. I will see the face of God. I will pray every day. I will see the face of God. I will tarry before the Lord. I will plead my call before the Lord. Yeah. Let it be that the Lord is exalted and magnified. The Lord will use you and I. Out of the mass of bed, the Lord has perfected praise and understand. The Lord will do it for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray and call upon the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name we are praying. Our Father, we give you praise for your word that has spoken unto us. Oh Lord, your word will take root in our hearts. And I pray that every, every outer of fear and what anxiety you will burn it from our hearts in the name of Jesus such as we require to walk with you to please you to serve you to declare your word i pray god you gather unto us in the name of jesus lord i pray that every storm before us every challenge before us as we look up unto you and we call upon your name and time your presence we refuse to give up all the storms will disappear in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered our prayers in jesus mighty 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 name we have prayed
As we continue in this morning's worship service, we will stand on our feet as we take the congregational hymn. Hymn 21, 2 1. Will your anchor hold? Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tide lifts and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? It is safely moored till the storm withstand, but is well secured by the Savior's hand, and the cables passed from his heart to mine can defy the blood through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fair when the breakers have told the reef is near, though the tempest rave and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave shall have back overflow. It will surely hold in the floods of death. When the waters cold chill our latest breath, on the rising tide it can never fail, while our hopes abide within the veil. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore, with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fasting to the rock which cannot move, grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. Thank you. 
Take our second congregational hymn from hymn 102, Gospel Hymns and Songs, hymn 102, the healer. On the cross crucified, in great sorrow he died, the giver of life was he. Yet my Lord was despised and rejected of men, this Jesus of Calvary. Price for healing was paid as those cruel stripes were made. Within Pilate's judgment all now is suffering afford perfect healing for all. This wonderful healer's smile. Came the leper to Christ, saying, Surely I know that thou, Lord, canst make me whole. When his great faith was seen, Jesus said, Yes, I will, and touched him and made him clean. He was healed, he has healed my sick soul, made me every wit whole, and he'll do the same to you. Is the same yesterday and today and forever. This Ela of men today. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Surely he bore our sorrows and by his stripes we are healed. <laughs>
remain standing as we lift up our voices to heaven. Let's appreciate the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, that was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He bore our sorrows and he gave us healing. Even when the storms is raging, our Lord has given us healing. Let's worship God for the privilege of healing, the privilege of sonship, this privilege of salvation. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Brethren, in Jesus' name we are prayed. This is now time to give our tithe and offering. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open ye the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. A tithe is 10% of our salaries as income, our income as salary earners, and um, our wages as entrepreneurs. Let's raise up our hands as we give our tithe and offering. Our leaders are passing around. Would Lord Jesus, we thank you for these gifts of this day's Sunday worship service. We we'll pray, Lord, that as we have brought these little tokens to your house, we we'll pray, Lord, you will bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Everywhere this token has come from, multiply the sources in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Our leaders will pass around. Just drop your offering as we continue. 